Hello again. Um, okay, so I'll just kind of carry on where I left off. There was a comment that um, Fiona left on my, she's also in my class. Fiona left after what I said and she said about the privilege of being able to play. Because it is a privilege, that's how it's seen in society. Because we're lucky that we're at, at a drama school and learning how to play. Um, and learning how to explore, maybe not using the word play, but learning how to explore and create and, and chuck things away if it doesn't work and do something else and then put all that together at the end, which in life people don't often get enough of, which I think is really sad. Um, it should happen more. I think that it, it should be in a day-to-day -day life we should have a chance to, to play. And um, yeah, so this idea that, that play is privilege and um, really got me because it, it, it is a privilege act, act to be able to play um, at the moment. And it's almost like, it always amazes me when you go through childhood that if you look back at it, it goes, you go through stages. Toddlers are meant to crawl around, or well, babies are meant to cry and, and, and now and again roll when they get a little older, then they're meant to crawl. And then they're meant to walk, and then they're meant to play and do all the kind of things they're supposed to do. And there's this like a time when you're in secondary school where you just sort of stop doing that. And you go from playing like you did in junior school to suddenly just wandering around in your lunch hour. And you don't actually do an activity or do things because there's no like hopscotch marks on the floor. Usually, and I'm not saying in all secondary schools, but in a lot, it's like they sort of stop that. Which is a real shame, um, and it just makes me wonder now whether things are starting to change within Scottish schools, and whether they're starting to have um, this element of play within what they do, and whether or not it's because this, because it is true, if you go out and you have a break from what you're doing, if you're sitting at a computer, or you're equally writing maths in class, or you're doing your office work, or you're doing whatever, you leave your desk, have 10 minutes, have a coffee, have a chat, talk to someone else. You can get rid of the muzzy head ache that you might have, or at least try to, and then you can go back and sit down and suddenly you feel, oh, I can do it now, I can sit and do this, which is what we need. We need these kind of, you need breaks, you need time, you need time to play and to think, which is what I think you need and I think it's really therapeutic to have that in a day-to-day -day life. Um, I don't think, I think we are very lucky to be doing that on a daily basis, to be going in and playing with ideas. Um, because it certainly makes, it's made me, personally it's made me, being able to talk about what I do, being able to not worry about what I say so much as I used to, has made me more articulate, even though I do ramble now. <laughs> But like being more articulate has helped me then be able to justify what I do or what I create and what I want to do. Be able to talk about it with more people and therefore from then on I can then take that into the into wherever I go, whether I, you know, go off and whatever I end up doing. Because you can use that. And I think like that sort of mentality should be used more and I know they're trying to to integrate into into school systems and things like that but it's got a long way to go and I do think that like it's also like because given the chance I think people would play but it's that chance and that opportunity um isn't given to people enough and like because I, I remember working when I worked before I came um to the academy and working in an office and it'd be absolute hell because I couldn't have my music on. I couldn't, um, I couldn't laugh very loud. I couldn't, I couldn't uh, do anything but the work I was doing. And for me, it was just utter hell because I can't, I couldn't cope with this idea that you couldn't talk about. And I was doing quite a creative, supposedly creative job as well. I was working, um, yeah, in a creative side of, uh, in an office, and and like we were talking about the arts. So. What amazed me is how deadening it was to your creativity and the ideas you came up with weren't as good as they would have been had you been able to chat about it and talk about it and come up with ideas and flowcharts and other things and all kinds of things like that and big, big, uh, what are they called, you know, like the 
spider web diagrams and things like that and, and um, do all those kinds of things because once you start chatting with the people and once you bounce off ideas because if you've got an idea someone else has got an idea and you put the two together you're bound to have a better result because that is how it works two minds are better than one and they always say that and yet we're meant to sit down and do things on our own which doesn't make any sense to me now I look at it <laughs> um, but I do think that is just the way that life is sometimes and that's the way well it isn't what life is it's the way we've made life that we've made our own we've stated that this is what we do and this is how we do it and this is how much time we have to do it and um if only we could then think in this other way and it's, it's changing our mindset and i know a lot of teachers in this new curriculum are having to change their mindset and how they think and how they do things and that is really hard I wouldn't say it was an easy job at all, um, but it's a really, it's really interesting to see how people are implementing the new curriculum and who's struggling and who isn't, and it's how free it, free you are to be able to do it, and it, I think it could be the same in any office situation. It depends on how the manager is and whether they have that kind of opinion, and I think this should be put more out there. I think this idea and these these kind of, this notion should be there for everyone to look at um, and should be encouraged and not discouraged, which it is in our society, it is discouraged. It is discouraged to think in a certain way and to do things in a certain way, which is really sad. But maybe things are starting to change and I do wonder, I really wonder my, like what, what those children who started off at now they're four and how their education will differ and how in 20 years what kind of children will we be having coming out of these systems now when they've learned in a much more creative way and where they've learned to collaborate a lot more and I do wonder if in 20, 30 years time you'll have a lot more like I suppose the word is entrepreneur or people who are going into you know more di different kinds of fields of work than they would not have done before going through the system and how you'll um what you'll see at the other end and I think it'll be really interesting and, and I wonder I it makes me wonder what those kind of people will be like and it's really exciting. So yes, same time next week. Hopefully. Or maybe before. Anyway, thank you for listening to my ramblings. Yes. <laughs> I saw a lot of random stuff in there. Yes. Anyway, thank you.